All right. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back. Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a safe and happy holiday season. Uh, so to start off with, uh, call the uh, meeting of the Architecture Review Committee. To Recording in progress. Uh, so Erica, would you do a roll call for us, please? Sure. Chair Hunter. Present. Vice Chair Tregenza. Here. Committee Member Bluth. Here. Committee Member Carter. Here. Committee Member Polly. Here. Committee Member Ostevars, let us know he will be absent. Committee Member Schmidt. Here. And I can go ahead and announce staff members present. Principal Planner Roveri, Associate Planner Zabdo, Associate Planner Buggert, and myself, Recording Secretary Barrera. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, so with that being done, we have a quorum and uh, we'll start by opening uh, up the uh, consent agenda uh, and uh, any uh, discussion or uh, items on that that anyone wants to discuss. I can go ahead and let the public know how they oh, can join. Yes. yes. Uh, members of the public are encouraged to join our meetings via ZoomGov, a secure service that connects you live with no lag time. This meeting is also streamed live on youtube.com forward slash city of Monterey with a 10 second delay. It's also streamed on Comcast channel 25 with up to a 90 second delay. If you would like to provide public comment, please join the meeting using Zoom or by telephone, making sure to join in time to accommodate delays. To join the Zoom meeting from a computer or phone, use the link or phone numbers on the agenda posted at iSearchMonterey.org. Since this meeting has already started, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. To join by telephone, dial 833-568-8864, then enter the webinar ID. Today's webinar ID is 161-914-9563. To provide public comment via Zoom, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen. To provide public comments by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand, then star six to unmute when called upon. Public commenters will be announced using their last three phone number digits or the name typed into Zoom. Public commenters will be muted until it's their turn to speak. Please turn off TV or computer speakers or go to another room while connected as background noise interferes with the broadcast. Public speakers will be called upon in order of hands raised. There is a three minute time limit for today's meeting please stay within that limit. Thank you. All right, thank you, Erica. Uh, there are two items on the uh, consent agenda, the minutes and then the uh, Dunecrest Avenue. Any uh, comments or discussion on any of those? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. All right, a motion has been made by uh, committee member so, Carter. Um, can we just double check that no one wants to make a public comment on those items? Okay. All right, uh, good point. Thank you, Fernanda. Uh, so open up to uh, the public for uh, comment on these two uh, consent agenda items. There's no attendees online either. All right, okay, very good. Uh, so if uh, we have the uh, motion had been put, uh, made by uh, committee member Carter and seconded by committee member uh, Bluth. And uh, will you conduct a roll call vote? For us, sure. please, Erica. Chair Hunter. Aye. Vice Chair Tregenza. Aye. Committee Member Bluth. Aye. Committee Member Carter. Aye. Committee Member Polly. Aye. And Committee Member Schmidt. Abstain. Okay. Oh. Uh, the minutes are approved with a vote of five. All right. Thank and you. the other, so. And the, and the yeah. other one there. The, the permit the, extension, correct? Yes. On Dunecrest? Oh, yes, yes. so that's the minutes and the 18 Dunecrest Avenue permit extension that were approved by this vote. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, so we'll close the consent agenda and open up for any public comments that are not on the uh, uh, public appearance address or a public appearance agenda today. So any comments not on the agenda from the public? No one online? There are no attendees. Okay. All right, thank you. We'll uh, cl uh, close uh, public comments uh, for items not on the agenda and open up the first public appearance item uh, today, which is to consider 2560 Garden Road Architectural Review Application ARP-20-0251 for preliminary and final architectural review of the remodel and repurposing of an existing office building. Okay. Uh, staff have a presentation. Thank you, Chair 
Thank you. Hi, my name is Christy Sato, Associate Planner with the City of Monterey. Can you turn your mic on, Christy? We can't hear you. It's on. Can you not hear me? Hello? It's faint. It's pretty muffled. Maybe in the back help. Is the mute button on her? Testing, testing. You got it. Oh, great. Thank you for letting us know. The project is located at 2560 Garden Road. It's for to remodel and repurpose an existing office building into 25 multifamily residential units, accessory structures, and new landscaping and tree removals. Staff is recommend, recommending the adoption of a resolution approving the project with conditions. Uh, here's the background on the project. In 2019, the City Council approved a multifamily overlay district for the Garden Road. This overlay allows up to 405 multifamily units at lots south of Garden Road. Um, to date, no units that have been permitted have been constructed, but we do have some approved projects here and uh, the pending approval of 2560 Garden Road, which uh, would all total 150 units. The um, Garden Road overlay that was adopted did have a um, initial study that was approved as part of the CEQA approval. There were mitigation measures approved as part of that uh, mitigated negative declaration, including um, mitigation measures on these topics. So there, um, those mitigation measures were included as conditions of approval uh, for this project in, in the resolution, the draft resolution for, uh, for your consideration tonight. The project is a 2.31 acre site. Uh, there is an existing office building, trees, and uh, existing paved parking <clears throat> lot in front of the building. The uh, zoning, that the general plan designation is industrial, and the zoning is also industrial in the multifamily overlay. So again, the project uh, is to remodel and repurpose the existing office building into 25 multifamily residential units. There are um, two accessory structures, which is bike lockers and a trash enclosure. Uh, new landscaping and landscape features which, which the site improvements, I'll go over those um, later in the presentation. Removal of nine trees and the planting of 40 new trees and um, shrubs. So this is showing the affordable unit breakdown um, as required by the inclusionary housing ordinance. Uh, five of the proposed 25 units would be deed restricted to house low income households. Um, so the the proposed breakdown of the 25 units currently is uh, two studios, seven one bedroom units, 16 one bedroom with den units. So um, the inclusionary ordinance requires that units be supplied in a proportionate mix of the proposed units. So the required affordable units would be one studio, one one bedroom, and three one bedroom with den units. Uh, a condition of approval has been included that requires the applicant to enter into affordable housing agreement with the city. Here's the proposed site plan um, showing the existing building. We have um, two easements, which I'll talk about a little bit more in the next slide. Um, bike lockers will be located in the existing parking lot. Um, there is one for each housing unit plus an additional one, so 26 total. They will restripe the existing parking lot to meet the parking dimensions. And there is a trash enclosure that is, uh, meets our requirements uh, for trash enclosure standards. There are three easements currently on the property. There's a scenic preservation easement that was um, approved in 1964. It's a 50 foot easement. The purpose is for scenic preservation along the highway and is subject to conditions and restrictions, which have been included as conditions of approval in the resolution. There's a PG&E easement, uh, 20 foot easement on the east side of the property and a five foot 
utility easement. Uh, here's the site section showing the uh, kind of topography here and the existing building and just showing um, in the front, you'll see by the street access, there's the existing parking lot. Uh, you enter in the lobby here and then you have your units and there's units on the lower level as well. Um, by the parking lot, they will have patios. At the rear, they'll have patios and decks and overlook the scenic easement, which is shown where the majority of the trees are here. And then there's also like an outdoor barbecue area on the other side, which I'll show in a different slide. Um, so all those decks and patios will overlook that scenic preservation easement, should be really nice. Um, proposed tree removal plan, they're proposing to remove nine trees. And um, indicated in orange here, there are um, six trees that are proposed to be removed due to poor health. And the three trees here highlighted in blue um, are proposed to be removed due to development. And here's the proposed landscape plan. You'll notice that all of the proposed uh, 40 trees are native, and this wasn't originally the case. They um, revised their landscape plan. So we're gonna have California buckeye, coast live oak, and black elderberry, and a number of um, native and drought resistant shrubs. And um, this was approved by the city forester as replacement for the nine trees. Here are the proposed color and materials. Uh, so the existing building would be remodeled. Um, the main materials would be CMU block, which would be painted white, wood siding, board and batten, and um, then the roofing, there would be new uh, roofing. Uh, the roof would be finished with uh, roofing tiles. The patio walls would be board form concrete and the balconies would be dark bronze metal. The doors would be dark bronze metal doors, um, dark bronze metal windows with wood accent panels. And then also um, there are gonna be dark uh, bronze metal accents on the building to complement the doors and the windows. Uh, here are the proposed elevations showing the change of um, building materials. The north elevation is the front elevation. The south elevation is the rear elevation that faces that scenic preservation easement at the back. Uh, the proposed trash enclosure is here. Um, the CMU block painted white and they'll have painted metal doors, a wood trellis, and a metal roof. Here's the proposed lighting plan. And um, just wanted to show you the locations. Uh, the bollard lights will be along the, the path. The, there will be exterior pathway wall lighting along the, um, the wall here that goes to the like outdoor barbecue area. So it's kind of lighting all of the pathways. And then um, the other lights will be in the parking area. So here are the findings for architectural review. Um, the proposed siding would remain um, the same as the existing building and would be repurposed and remodeled for a change in use from office to multifamily residential. Uh, the mass would substantially remain the same except for the new patios and balconies, which would add horizontal articulation and interest. So the project, um, oh, sorry, I have it's continued. <laughs> the proposed architectural style is appropriate in Monterey. I'm gonna feature uh, the board and batten siding, wood siding, CMU block walls, metal accents and um, metal doors and windows with wood accent panels, existing roof finished with roofing tiles, and the patio walls would be board form concrete and balconies, dark bronze metal. The accessory structures would match the apartment buildings in style and finishes with the use of CMU block painted white, painted metal doors and a wood trellis. 
uh, with the metal roof. The proposed project will not un unreasonably impair the views or privacy or living environment currently enjoyed by others. The balconies proposed on the main level would be located at the rear of the building facing Monterey Salinas Highway and the scenic preservation easement. There are no public views over the project site. Uh, the proposed project is consistent with the industrial general plan designation. Uh, there's a policy in the land use element that states industrial areas can also support medium density residential uses, which can serve as multifamily workforce housing. The medium density residential land use designation allows up to 30 units per acre, and the proposal includes a density of 10.82 dwelling units per acre. Um, also, increasing the stock of affordable housing to Monterey's workforce is goal um, B of the land use element. Land use element policy B2 suggests the south side of Garden Road be considered for multifamily housing. And the project is consistent with crime prevention through environmental design guidelines. Uh, the proposed finish, color, materials, landscaping, lighting, um, and other exterior features are appropriate for the project site and immediate area. The apartment buildings would feature the um, architectural colors and materials that I listed previously. Same as the accessory structures, which would complement um, the changes they're making to the building and the surrounding area. The proposed lighting is appropriate and that it would provide pedestrian level lighting throughout the site. It would be directed downward focused, shielded, and energy efficient. For the tree removal finding, there are nine trees proposed for removal that would prevent reasonable development of the permitted uses. The siting of the proposed improvements are reasonable because they would be placed around and in proximity to the existing building, which would greatly reduce the number of tree removals. Uh, the proposed project is reasonable when compared to other sites along Garden Road with the same zoning and similar topographic and vegetation characteristics, which are developed with large buildings and parking lots. Uh, the city forestry department approved um, the removal of the nine trees and addition of the 40 native trees um, with you know, California buckeye, coast live oak, black elderberry. It's a good selection of native, native trees for the site. Uh, Monterey pine trees were not recommended for um, the site. They don't, they don't do well. Um, as um, just being, they don't do well. It was, I'm sorry, um, the arborist report like specified that planting Monterey pine trees just isn't recommended for the site. Um, there's a special condition of approval 2C that requires all replacement trees to be planted on private property at 2560 Garden Road. So we make sure they're planted on the project site. Um, and the proposed replacement trees, number, size, and species, and placement are appropriate. Staff rec recommends that the ARC adopt a resolution approving architecture review permit application for preliminary and final architecture review of the remodel and repurposing of the existing office building into 25 multifamily housing units, and the tree removal application for the removal of nine trees at 2560 Garden Road. I am here for any questions that you might have, and the applicant is also available and has a presentation. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Christy. Uh, so open up the any questions from the uh, committee for Christy. Um, I'd like to make a clarifying point. Um, when Christy said that the forestry division has approved the trees, um, it means that they, weigh in on the replacement tree types and mm -hmm. sizes, but they didn't approve the tree the tree removals. That's right. That's a decision that you have to make today. I see. Thank you. Uh, any other committee members uh, questions or comments or for Christy? Yeah, I, this is Justin. I have a question. Um, the, the 40, I realize that the, the city forester isn't approving or denying. Um, was the 40 replacement trees their mandate? Where did, where did that number come from? Is that a three to one replacement ratio or where did that 40 come from? Um, we did have a replacement ratio. And sorry, I'm getting the staff report out because I can't remember.
I think it's a, I think it's three to one, but they will, they exceed that. Yeah, that's why I was a little, usually it's three to one. And it, it seems, I don't, I don't know if they're trying to be good citizens there. It just seems like a, right. Yeah, actually, the, actually it's, it already seems pretty heavily forested out there. We, we can talk about that in the discussion, yeah. but I was just wondering where that 40 number came from. Yeah, three, yeah, three to one is in the code, so they exceed that. But yeah, I, I didn't ask them why they're planting more, but that's a good question okay. for the applicant. Okay. I should have stated that in my report as well. <laughs> about the no worries. ratio. Christy, I have two questions. One, um, just to clarify, this site is behind the building that fronts Garden Road, correct? Let's let me get the map up here. <clears throat> it looks like it's kind of behind and it's really closer to 68 than it is to Garden. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then second, will they be utilizing, maybe it's a question that the um, the applicant will be able to answer better, but are they proposing to use the existing exterior and then improve on that, or are they going to totally take it down to the foundation? Um, I know there's another project we discussed that looks like they actually took it all the way down to the foundation. I don't know if the building just wasn't um, possible to be reused because of deterioration. I know a lot of these buildings have been vacant for a while, so I was just curious. No, it's not a demo and rebuild. It's um, just like a remodel and repurpose. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to follow yeah. up on that question from Shelly, um, because it, and I was going to wait till the discussion, but I guess it's somewhat related because I noticed 2000 Garden Road was torn down to the foundation as well and is it I know I missed a meeting or two over the past 12 months and I don't know if it came back but it did that project come back or are they literally just going to rebuild it as it was do you know that answer that question Fernanda yeah. Um, I think I think it's just relevant because, um, as I view a lot of these buildings out on Garden Road, they're well use, they're well past their usable lifespan, and they they seem to be appearing as remodels. And sure enough, two thousand Garden Road, they got into it, and I'm sure that they figured out that it was well past its usable life. And you know, as I walked around this building and into it today, it felt like it was well past its useful life. So. Um, how was that handled at Garden Road? How was that handled at 2000 Garden Road? I don't remember the specifics of that permit. Um, I do know that it, it definitely received um, architectural review, but I haven't followed up the process at the building permit stage. Um, that's something that I, we can follow up on. I just again want to ask where the water is coming from for these buildings. It's my understanding that part of condition two of the cease and desist order is that you cannot change the intensity of the use of the water on this property. And so with the cease and desist order still in place, what's the plan for the water? And if these are shovel ready, there won't be progress made on these for quite a while. They will need um, proof of uh, water availability before they get their building permit. So, okay, but that doesn't answer my question. Yeah, we can ask the applicant. The city doesn't know? Um, it's my understanding that they have the water, but I haven't seen a letter from the water district. Follow up on Zoe's... Um... Question, I, I have the same concerns. I know uh, these buildings were all like commercial office buildings prior. And I would imagine the water usage is a lot less than a residential building would be where you have laundry, dishwashers, people bathing, probably a higher use of toilet usage. So I am kind of curious 
what the water impact will be with the change of use. Yeah, I would like to direct that question to the applicant when they come up. Okay. Uh, if there aren't any other uh, questions for Christy, uh, invite the applicant to make a statement if they'd like. Uh, identify yourself and. <clears throat> Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Randy Russell with RM Design Group from San Luis Obispo. My uh, pleasure to finally bring this project in front of you guys. Uh, we've been at this. Oh, Fernanda, it's probably been three years. I think we've been playing with this project to get there. Um, are we? I see no light. Or okay. Am I being heard? We can hear him. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Sometimes I just speak loud. You can probably hear me that far. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a presentation prepared, but I, I think Christy did a wonderful job of presenting, although there are a couple of slides that I might go over just to clarify some of the questions I've already heard and then make myself available for uh, additional questions. Don't Probably be the most your... effective use of time. Uh, sure, uh, you can bring that up and then I'll just scroll through a couple of them. Go let ahead me, to the- Let me share first. <laughs> Sorry, second. While she brings that up, I do wanna compliment the city on this overlay uh, that they've provided for this area. I work all over the state in affordable housing and ADU ordinance work and the struggle to bring housing opportunities to, to cities is, is very real, especially with the costs associated with non-revenue generating properties. Um, so to take this leap to put that overlay over a potentially revenue generating place like a commercial or industrial is, is a big step forward. And I commend the city on doing that, I wish others would take on that. Uh, although, of course, adapter for use has its own challenges. Uh, go ahead and flip to the site plan. Just I think it's two more there. That's a great place to start. Um, I wanted to point out that the the significant impact to the site from this project will be the community open space. Right now, on the left hand side of that slide, uh, you see the the footprint of where we've got some patios and and barbecues and whatnot. Currently that area is mostly paved. It is uh, got parking and the trash enclosures and whatnot down there. We were actually restoring the landscape in, in much of that area. Um, the, that hill was probably the larger challenge because there is gonna be, that's gonna be our accessible entrance. We have to make all that area accessible, the trash, the, the uh, uh, community open space. So there is some grading that ends up occurring in there, but it's essentially over already disturbed soil. So we thought that was an appropriate place for that. I just wanted to focus on that because that is also the area where we're taking the two of the three trees that are development driven. Uh, nine, nine trees total, six trees are recommended by the arborists just because they've, they're dying. They're, they're diseased. They're, let's get them out of here. You know, it's not far to, for the project. It's for just the general uh, uh, support of the site. The other three trees are um, project driven. Two of them are over near that parking area you see on the left of the building that is uh, basically driven because we have to change the grade to make accessible parking. So we have to bring that down to 5% cross slope on the parking and that ends up having for some short two, three foot retaining walls and creating those pathways. And that just impacts the, the, the soil. So we had to take those out. And the other one was at the far right corner of the building. And that is impacted by the fire department's requirement to have a pathway all the way around the building to be able to service it in the event of an emergency. So while they are development driven, they are certainly driven outside our desire for, you know, luxury apartments or fancy amenities or anything like that. They're really addressing the functional impacts. Um, let me just walk through the floor plans of the building real quick. Scroll to the next one. This particular, oh, go back, oh, please. Thank you. Um, this building is a CMU building. Uh, unlike many of the buildings, like the one up on Garden Road, which is all wood framed, this is an all CMU building with a truss roof. We've had our engineers out there. We have in-house engineering. And we've gone through that in preparation for the CDs, which have actually already been prepared. 
um, in anticipation of our approval here. Um, did a thorough investigation of the building. It is very serviceable and has been maintained over time. Uh, certainly the, the aspect of the CMU structure tells you that, that a little more longevity than a, a weather-torn uh, wood building. Um, you'll notice uh, if you look at uh, particularly the lower floor where you see some cross-hatch lines, that's actually the bearing lines of the structure, which lend itself perfectly to uh, the configuration of the apartments. Go ahead and flip to the next page for me. Just gives you an idea of how this really lended itself to this, especially when you know, it was primarily office space. It has been uh, some some manufacturing light industrial, mostly office and medical office uh, in there over time. That's kind of what occupies there right now. Um, what else should I take you to, to to show you? When we skip all the way to the site plan there, I don't know that I'm happy to go over any of these, but you have it in your packet. Go back one. Uh, one more. Oh, I was trying to get to the site plan. Oh, the site plan, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, oh, the, the illustrative landscape. Plan. Oh, sure. So, I mean, that's not that important. So, yeah, that gives you an idea of how we ended up developing the, the outdoor amenity space, which uh, I, I think is one of the most significant improvements to the site. Otherwise, we're maintaining the existing building. We're essentially skinning it with uh, larger openings uh, to, to address uh, light and ventilation and just the, the pleasantness of the the user spaces. We have uh, added some uh, small Juliet balconies in some places or walkout patios, added some wood accents in there to add uh, a little more warmth to the overall feel. Um, we are again, still working with the existing building and and what it is, the, the, you know, it's not, doesn't have a particular style to it. And we tried to bring some character in a little more contemporary look. Um, aside from that, we've gone through the, the conditions. We are, uh, fine as written, uh, ask you to approve, uh, approve the all components of this uh, resolution today. And I'm happy to, to answer any questions you all may have. Oh, I'm sorry, one more, let me jump in there. Water issue. Um, our original design for this project was about twice this size. Uh, the, the fact is that when we evaluated the water, which is based upon uh, the commercial square footage, that's how the, the management district has us do that. Um, we've got heavy water users like dental offices in there, and we have light users that might be, a, you know, a, an accounting office or something like that. There's a mix in there. So instead of being use specific, they just treat it as commercial square footage and come up with a, an amount that lends itself to essentially when you back into the equation, how many units we can put in there how many bathrooms, how many dishwashers, how that whole list of things that has been spoken to. Um, everything is designed in, we have to put together a little spreadsheet of that. Uh, it's a form with the, the water management district. We end up doing high efficiency dishwashers and washing machines uh, through the process and stay within the calculation to, to not exceed the, the, the use or the allotment that is on that site. And we'd have documentation of that. That was part of our early submittal. So with that, I will stop talking and let you duck. Sorry, okay. can you answer uh, the question you. about Did I miss the one? number of trees? Could you, oh, who had a question? Happy to answer the tree question. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Luckily, I had the opportunity to reach out to the arborist. Uh, um, I'm going right here. Bear with me just two seconds. Um, I totally forgot that. Well, the issue came down to, to the fact that yes, it's a three to one, and that would get us to 27 trees. But the fact was that a number of locations were not best for the native trees that, that were ideal there because of the proximity of the parking lot and where some of those would need to go. And there was recommendation that we had a different type of tree and they're still in your native tree list but not the ones that were, I think, preferred originally in effectively a negotiation between our arborist and the and the forestry uh, department. And so this is where we arrived at. I'm, I wasn't the arborist who did that negotiation, but it was back and forth in the process there. If you'd like to relieve us from putting in additional trees, um, we're open to uh, considering that, but we're not asking for it. Great, thank you for answering those. Thank you sure. for the presentation. Uh, any uh, committee members have questions for the applicant? 
Yeah, I have one. Sorry, can you help me with some acronyms that you said? I was looking back through the report and you said CMU. Oh, concrete masonry unit. Okay, concrete. and then um, CD, you said something about CD plans or? My apologies. Sometimes I get into my own world. That's construction documents. Those would be the, the building plans that would go in for a building permit. That would ultimately be the documents that are approved for construction and are used to build the, build the building. And lastly, so what you're essentially saying about the water is that the water management district has said that you have the water to build what you're proposing. They have uh, confirmed the amount that we have. Yes. Yes, I'm saying that. Okay. <laughs> I'm just concerned about the cease and desist order. Pardon me? I'm just concerned about the cease and desist order because it's tricky with changing use and intensification and stuff like that. We were highly concerned about that too as that went through and had discussions with planning through the process. And currently everyone believes we're we're in compliance. Uh, as you all know, these things do get tested also. Um, when are you planning to start construction? I do not personally have control over starting construction on that, but as I said, the the actual construction documents, the building permit documents have been prepared and submitted uh, just because this, this the, the hearings have drawn out um, and are waiting to get through approval here, and then they will begin the plan check process. So the availability, uh, the opportunity to start construction could be as early as late spring. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bob. Are you taking any noise abatement um, initiatives with the repurposing of the building? So we windows, are, given the closeness to the airport and the highway? We have not done that, nor has a study been done to address that. Um, it, it, it was a valid question. I considered that as I was watching the presentation going, we might want to consider some triple glazing along that uh, that that. 68 corridor there, but no, currently nothing is is proposed. And again, it's a CMU building, which is generally pretty darn quiet. So we're really talking about uh, the windows and doors being the, the source of noise, the source of noise. Is your plan to re replace the windows? You yes. You're saying to expand. So, I mean, I would assume you would use dual pane windows, which might add some level of um, noise reduction. Yes, it, they'll all be dual plane windows and doors in the glazing, of course, and properly weather stripped and insulated far beyond what exists there today. So that's going to make an impact in itself. Um, it's a two lane highway. I built stuff right along 101 where we've typically about the same range and typically we do end up with a triple glaze situation there, but we're probably right on the border uh, in that in that spot. I think there were some previous data points about noise contours from the airport in that area too. And um, just in the conversations about building on Garden Road. And I think that's right on what they were planning. Any other questions for the applicant? No? All right. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank, thank you for your time. Uh, at, uh, at this point, uh, I'll open up the uh, for public comment on this uh, application. Erica, would you remind uh, people who want to phone in uh, how they can do so? Sure. Members of the public are encouraged to join our meetings via ZoomGov, a secure service that connects you live with no lag time. To join today's Zoom meeting from a computer or phone, use the link or phone numbers on the agenda posted at iSearchMonterey.org. To join by telephone, dial 833-568-8864, then enter the webinar ID. Today's webinar ID is 161-914-9563. To provide public comment via Zoom, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen. To provide public comments by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand, then star six to unmute when called upon. Public commenters will be announced using their last three phone number digits or the name they've typed into Zoom. I currently see no attendees online. Thank you, Erica. Is anyone in the chamber want to make comment on this uh, proposal? All right. All right. Uh, if that's the case, we'll close the uh, comment portion of that and open up for discussion with the committee members. Just to follow up on Zoe's question, I think I remember in a previous uh, meeting where we were asking the applicant, and it was a similar answer where 
they had to reduce the scope of their project to meet the water requirements that um, were available for the building. So it doesn't sound like you know, there's anything that's really gonna impact any of these developments beyond just having to um, not have the density that would probably be beneficial for um, our housing needs. But otherwise, I think it's a great project. The more of these we can get done, the better. Any other comments from committee members? I'm just so pleased to see um, the interest in making this happen. I think the house, the workforce housing in our community is really important. So. Very good. All right. Thanks. Uh, Hi, this is um, this is Justin. Uh, I, I switched my phone. Um, I'm heading up north, but um, I know these projects are important, so I did want to um, stay on. Um, uh, uh, just a, a few comments that I would make. Um, I uh, do commend the applicant on the creation of outdoor spaces for the inhabitants of this structure. It's been something that's been sorely lacking in previous proposals. In fact, it, you guys actually sat down and thought about the human beings that are gonna live in this building and gave them a little bit of open space um, and some usable open space at that. Um, you should be commended, commended for that. Um, it's not easy shoehorning that space into an existing building footprint. Um, I would ask the board to consider whether uh, fellow board members whether uh, it's necessary to request 40 replacement trees. Um, I made a, a trip out to the, the site today to look at it and the, the site in front of it with those octagonal buildings that are being torn down looks like a, a bit of a war zone. Um, I, I'm not sure what's going on there. It looks like they might be doing partial demolition or something or maybe it's just vandalism. But on top of the degraded state of the buildings, um, there are pines that have fallen down and I realized there was an intentional uh, replacement policy not to include pines, but I do wonder there is a sort of upper canopy situation going on which tends to rob lower canopies of trees of, of light and makes it harder for them to regenerate. So I, I do question whether, a, are we just arbitrarily asking this applicant to purchase a bunch of lower canopy trees that may not thrive in the current environment. And, you know, does it make sense to, um, you know, possibly push that back to 30 replacement trees? Um, it's, it just feels pretty, pretty dense and bushy out there as it is. Um, the only final comment I would make and, um, you know, this goes back to the 2000 Garden Road project. Um, again, it's, it's a well-designed remodel to an existing building. As I walked around that building today and as I looked at it, it's another building that I really question whether it's past its useful um, lifespan, uh, particularly at the front end and that sort of funky angular entry portion that they're, they're reusing. Um, I know they're doing some things where they're cutting into the CMU to create these balconies and things like that. And quite honestly, that's exactly what was proposed on 2000 Garden Road. They were gonna sort of saw cut into the concrete and create these bigger openings for the, for the, um, for the new buildings. But, but again, I, I don't know if it became too expensive there or if the building was rot or you know incapable of supporting the new loads, but all of a sudden that building's been torn down. And if we had taken the approach on that site, okay, we're building an entirely new building and not using that footprint, I imagine a more creative use of that site plan would have been done. And um, it would have created more opportunities for open space. It would have created more opportunities for you know, better parking solutions. But as it is, if they're working under approval where we approved you know, rebuilding on the existing footprint, that's what we're left with. And so I just, I hope the applicant has really looked into the structure, looked into the condition of the existing building and is certain that this is the way to go, 
reusing that existing building because you know it, it'd be a shame to have to get into this and then tear the whole thing down and then because they're tied into this approval have to rebuild right on top of the existing footprint in the exact same style and shape of the previous building that was approved so th those are just my thoughts on this project thank you thank you justin having um I, I don't live far from the site and I also work on one of the last office buildings on Garden Road towards the airport. And I've watched these existing buildings slowly go into decay to the point like 2000 Garden Road where they can no longer be utilized. Um, so I appreciate the effort that these applicants are making to utilize existing buildings. Um, but again, I I uh agree with justin's comments regarding whether or not the existing structure is usable um because we are approving or not approving we are deciding on a proposed project per the existing footprint use, utilizing the existing building and like justin said if the building is not usable um there could be different ways to go about meeting the number of um, units that are proposed or or are capable of um, sustaining with the water usage that might have more creative freedom or a better design option if they were not using the existing building. So I, I do echo his concern and his question whether or not um, any the applicant has looked into whether or not this is really a project that can be used as a remodel as opposed to a demo and redesign. But again, I appreciate the revitalization the attempt to revitalize and use existing buildings because um, those buildings along Garden Road have just slowly gone into decay and they become an eyesore and a danger habit. And I know about two years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if it was Caltrans or somebody else did a sweep and there was quite a bit of homeless encampments along that 68 scenic area green space and I have a feeling that one of the reasons why it was so accessible to be used that way was because these buildings are vacant and nobody's going in and out of those areas and I saw the uh, pine tree that uh, fell on the building well the, the security fencing along the building that friends garden road right in front of this building site there was a large pine tree that fell probably during the most recent storms. I don't know much more about what else might have fallen, but there was quite a bit of tree uh, devastation in that area. So 40, 40 trees does seem like a lot in that particular area. Okay, thank you, Shelling. Any other comments? Um, but, you know, in my opinion, with the trees, I would just, I'm not a expert on, you know, trees. I would just defer to the arborist and the forester and their recommendations. All right. Uh, no other comments. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on this uh, uh, application. I move to approve. Uh, 2560 Garden Road, ARP-20-0251 for a preliminary and final architectural review of the remodel and repurposing of an existing office building and all the rest of it that's on there. <laughs> I don't read the whole thing. Can we include the tree removal permit? And the, and the tree removal permit, exactly. Included. I'll second. Okay. All right, uh, motion has been uh, made by committee member uh, or vice chair uh, Tregenza uh, to approve uh, the architectural review application ARP 0 2-20-0251 uh, for the preliminary final architectural review of the remodel of the existing office building and the uh, tree removal application ART 22-0161. And has been seconded by committee member uh, Bluth. Okay, uh, Erica, you conduct a uh, roll call vote for us, please. Chair Hunter. Aye. Vice Chair Tregenza. Aye. Committee member Bluth. Aye. Committee member Carter. Aye. Committee member Polly. 
Um, I, I say I, I, I do wish we had backed off the tree replacement, but I'll say I. Okay. Um, committee member Schmidt. Aye. Okay, that motion carries with a vote of six. The decision is appealable within 10 days to the planning commission. We have applications in our office or online and you can submit them to the planning office. All right, thank you, Erica. Uh, congratulations, uh, wish you the very best with your project. Okay, uh, next uh, we'll go ahead to consider updates for the signs, multi-tenant sign program and temporary signs submittal checklist as public handouts. Uh, per Article 20, Section 15.378, and under General Rule, Article 5, Section 15.061. Does staff have a presentation? Yes. Well, Matthew. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Matthew Buggert. I'm an Associate Planner with the City of Monterey's Planning Division, and I'm going to pull up our staff presentation. <laughs> So similar to the architecture review handouts that we talked about last year, uh, these are the handouts that are provided to the public regarding signs, uh, all signs in the city, all types of signs. And with, we have some proposed checklist updates, which need to go through ARC. A little bit of background. Similar to those other architecture review handouts, these were last updated in 2016. Uh, there are three handouts total, one for generalized signs, one for multi-tenant sign programs, and then one specific to temporary signs. Uh, as stated, the submittal requirements for these various applications uh, are subject to review and oversight by the Architectural Review Committee. This is the wrong section, apologies. To access these handouts, uh, you can go to the planning office website, click on how to apply for a planning permit. And there's a drop down menu of all the various planning permit applications. And the three that we're looking at today uh, are pointed at here. You can click on them and they'll bring you to the PDF of the handout. The first one that received some updates is the generalized signs handout. This is a two page front and back handout. Um, and in general, this handout first talks about uh, its introduction, uh, signs of the city and the applicable code sections. It talks about the difference between administrative level versus architectural review committee review. And then it goes on to describe the citywide sign guidelines and references those and provides a link to the citywide sign guidelines. And then it provides a distinction between major versus minor signs. Minor signs that comply with the citywide sign guidelines and would receive administrative level review versus major signs which don't comply with the citywide guidelines and require your review. On the second page, are is the application requirements, the submittal checklist that we're talking about today as well, uh, including the plan, the location of the signs uh, in comparison to the width of the building, sign labels, a summary table of it where the sizes are discussed, and then the nitty gritty sign details, the types of lighting if applicable, uh, lettering dimensions, depending on the type of sign, the sign guidelines point to letter size. And then it also points to cases where you may require a multi-tenant sign program. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later, but generally that is required when there's multiple tenants on the same parcel that all share a building face or, um, yeah, that all share a building face or same property. So the updates that are proposed are relatively minimal, uh, updating the department name, community development department, 
reviewing, uh, removing the physical application requirements instead of requiring the paper versions. We're just requiring electronic submittals since COVID. Uh, and also clarifying that the dimensions of both the existing and proposed signs are required. The previous version of the handout only talked about, well, it, it didn't really clarify. So we had applicants just submitting the proposed signs, but we need information about all the signs that are on a building. From there, uh, we also are updating the multi-tenant sign program handout. It is another two-pager front and back. The front talks about the background. The back of it includes all the submittal items that we are requesting of the applicants. Uh, these strikeout underlined versions are included in the uh, in the agenda packet as attachments to the agenda report if you need to look at them a little bit closer. The multi-tenant sign program layout is extremely similar to the overall signs uh, handout, but it provides the reason as to why uh, multi-tenant programs are used and what we're looking for at the city level. Um, it, again, it's very, very similar. Uh, the only difference is down in the application requirements, really, where the site plan, we're asking for all of the different tenant information all of the information regarding the different tenants within the building so if you have three different tenants the application the applicant sometimes is surprised that they need to provide input on everybody else's stuff but the way that our citywide side guidelines work if you have multiple tenants you need to know all the different measurements for all of them um, and so similarly there's little differences like in the summary table also providing the number of tenants instead of just talking about your particular business uh, the updates to this, again, updating the department name, remo removing the physical application requirements in favor of electronic submittals, clarifying that the dimensions apply to both existing and proposed signs. And then there were some other minor adjustments necessary. Um, the review process, uh, we, the original uh, handout pointed only to the planning commission, but there are some cases where it just gets appealed anyways from the planning commission further on to city council. So. Uh, just slight little tweaks to make it more uh, broad and applicable to every application, um, including the building and safety division email, uh, updating the web links, the city's website got updated a lot. And finally, there's the temporary sign permit. This is it. It's a half sheet. I know that the text here is kind of small, but it's pulled. Uh, there are Reg the regulations for temporary signs are printed directly onto this sign permit. This also acts as the permit for somebody when they come in for a temporary sign. Um, can't have more than two in a year. Can't exceed 30 consecutive days of being displayed. And if it doesn't comply with this, it needs review before ARC, which is also restated on this slide as well. Um, it includes all the information. The handout also serves as the issued permit. And the only real update that we made was allowing electronic submittal applications, as the original handout said, uh, to come. You, you must come to the planning office to fill out paperwork with, with us. With that, the recommendation from staff is that the ARC approve the resolution accepting updates to these three uh, public handouts. With that, that concludes staff's presentation. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, well done. Any uh, questions from the committee for Matthew? I, yeah, I've got one. Is, is a banner com considered a <clears throat> temporary sign? Yes. Vinyl banner? Okay. Yes. Are you talking about the ones they put like for Christmas at the wharf and Halloween at the wharf, like on their big sign they have out in front? Well, not not to city, but you know, businesses sometimes just have like a banner that says sale or you know, fifty percent off or that kind of stuff. So I will say there are some exceptions in the citywide sign guidelines. Um, I don't remember exactly when it comes to banners, uh, or, uh, but there are exceptions for open signs. Um, I, it wouldn't apply to every. You may know. 
Oh, just sales signs are not exempt. They would require a temporary sign permit. Maybe it was you, Patrick, but not that long ago, you mentioned that you had seen an overabundance of real estate signs. Um, was there any conversation about that? I think it was Bob, actually. It wasn't in our neighborhood, yeah. I don't remember following up on that. Um, I think Fernanda had mentioned that uh, city staff had pursued it to the extent that it's in with a lawyer and that they were pretty busy. And so I don't think it's a top priority. Okay. So maybe, maybe later. So those signs then, just for clarification for me, those signs would not fall under sign guidelines for the city. Um, real estate signs, which include for sale or for rent signs are exempt um, from requiring a sign permit. And okay. there are no number of days that they can, like there's no limit to the days that they can be installed. So that that's one of the comments that um, Bob had made. And it doesn't matter the size. I have to look. Um, I don't remember what the size limitation was. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we need a motion or? Apologies, I'm pulling up the uh, the citywide sign guidelines just to take a look. We would also need public comment to option for public comment. Just okay. to clarify too, this is not like a this house is for sale sign. It was more like a this property is managed by Mangold Management and it's a permanent sign that's on a house. So it's not just a sign that's on the front lawn. There is a maximum sign area for real estate signs of 16 square feet per sign. Okay. Any other comments or questions for Matthew? Okay. Uh, is this something that we need to uh, uh, approve here? Uh, as far as a motion or recommendation? Yes, there's a resolution in front of you with okay. exhibits as uh, uh, the the amendments are in the exhibit. Okay. All right. We need to ask for public comment before we go to a vote. Right, no, I, I, I got it, yep. Um, so uh, at that point, if there are no other questions or comments for Matthew, for Matthew on this, uh, do we have uh, any uh, people waiting to make public comments on this? There are no attendees online. Okay. All right. And no one in the chamber? Right. No one in the chamber. So, right. I'll go ahead and close the public comment section on this uh, resolution. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Okay. All right. Uh, a motion to approve has been made by Committee Member Carter <laughs> and by Committee Member Schmidt. Eric, will you conduct a roll call vote for us, please? Sure. Chair Hunter. Aye. Vice Chair Trigenza. Aye. Committee Member Bluth. Aye. Committee Member Carter. Aye. Committee Member Polly. Aye. Committee Member Schmidt. Aye. Okay. That motion carries with a vote of six. The decision is appealable to the Planning Commission within 10 days. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, lastly, are there any staff reports or items uh, uh, or uh, information reports from the staff for the committee? Yes, I have a short report. Um, the objective design standards that are required um, for projects that meet certain uh, um, that meet certain affordability levels and um, as as allowed by Senate Bill Thirty Five, um, those standards were went to the December Thirteenth, Twenty Twenty Two Planning Commission meeting, but they were continued. 
to the January 24th meeting. So they haven't been adopted yet. Um, we've received lots of public comments about them. There was an introduction to the Monterey 2031 general plan update um, at the also at the December 13th planning commission meeting. Um, so if you're interested, you can watch that, uh, the rerun uh, on YouTube. And the general plan update includes the land use, housing and safety elements. So three elements being updated. And then um, also at that meeting, there was a um, the staff presented a, an updated ADU ordinance to the planning commission to be consistent with the state law that recently became in effect in on January first. Um, that ordinance was recommended to the city council, so it will be scheduled to a city council meeting soon. And then the tentative agenda for February first ARC meeting is one seventy nine Sino Street. Um, 179 Sino Street. Yeah, it's in Old Town. Um, yeah, um, and then 2600 Garden Road, um, they submitted a conceptual site plan of their new proposal. So it's, they've completely scrapped what you all looked at last year and have decided to pursue a different route so that will come before you at the next meeting and will that be pri uh, looking at that as a preliminary review on that then since it's a new yes it's a redesign of the project it's a pre-application yeah. so it's not an official project yet it's just <coughs> yeah at this point i'm sorry which project which project was that again the 2600 garden road project is that the one in front of the one we just approved? Yes. <laughs> okay. That, that's that's music to my ears. That's <laughs> be there, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. the, the, there's always hope, Justin. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, staff and uh, committee members. Uh, is right now at uh, five oh seven. Uh, adjourn the meeting. Can I can I ask can I ask a quick question of staff before we adjourn? Sure, go um, ahead. Uh, and I just I want to follow up on the two thousand Garden Road situation. Did I miss a meeting where that was brought back as a complete demolition or? I'm just curious. I don't recall seeing that on any agenda. It was proposed, it was brought to us as a remodel. And if you drive by that site now, it's a complete demolition. I can follow up on that at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah it, it, my recollection, Justin, I remember the, when we had the the, the first uh, uh, review of this uh, and then like uh, you've mentioned you know it, it's it's uh, it's been demolished but i haven't seen anything that was came to us to look at okay this is no longer a valid uh plan or design and you know what new is coming forward from that so yeah if we could get information on that next meeting that would be great i want to say they started taking that building down around october i'm I'm sorry, I didn't. October. Oh, October. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you, Shelley. Okay. All right. All Enough. I can think about when I drive by there is the comments we all had about the trash enclosure. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, uh, go ahead and adjourn the meeting at five oh nine. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon. Bye.